Welcome back. In this video, we're going to learn how to deal with Ajax request in Node.js. Now, what's important to note is the server doesn't really care if a request is a regular request for a page or an Ajax request. And in fact, it has no way to tell which is which. So if you were to receive an Ajax get request to look for a page, then you would have no idea it's Ajax and just think it's a regular request for a page and return it in the same way. So the first important thing to note is that Ajax requests are no different from regular requests. However, Ajax requests are more likely to come with parameters. The most common types of Ajax requests are post requests and put requests. And again, it's important to note that put and post requests can both be regular requests and Ajax requests. However, regardless of if they're Ajax or not, post requests and put requests have to be dealt with differently than get requests. And in this video, we'll see how. So on your screen, you can see that I've just created a basic server that does nothing. And in here, we're going to put our code to deal with a post request that comes with JSON. So first of all, we need to find out the request method. So if the request method is a get method, is a get request, then it's just requesting a resource. And we can serve a file like normal. Otherwise, if the request method is a post request, then we need to deal with it differently. Get requests are guaranteed to come in one packet, which means all the data of the request arrives to your server at the same time. However, a network can split up a post request or a put request, which usually contains more data, into multiple packets, which are, might arrive at your server at different times. So we need to be prepared for this. So just because we know a post request has come to the server, doesn't mean that we necessarily know th that we, all the information we need to answer the request. So instead, so we're just going to initialize a variable called body, which is an empty string that will contain all the data once it's arrived. Then we'll register an event listener, request on data, which listens out for when a new data chunk comes in. And then we'll register a callback function, which takes the data as a parameter. And then in this function, we'll simply just append that data to the body. Then we'll also list out, listen out for an end, which means the request has ended. We've got all the data. And this callback function takes no parameters, and now we can deal with it. So the first thing we need to do is the body is just a plain string. And in this fictional example, the post request is returning JSON data. So what we need to do is we need to pass this string into JSON data. And the way we do that is using the query string module. The query string module comes with node.js. So we don't need to install it. So I'll just call it QS and then require query string. And now simply all we need to do here is use var post data is equal to qs.pass body. And then we call it. And say for example, the JSON contained a field called username, you could just simply access it by doing post data dot username, like so. It's important to note that qs.pass is needed regardless of whether or not you're dealing with JSON because it comes as a string of random characters, basically, or not random, but they, it won't come as plain text. So even if you're dealing with plain text, you need to do qs.pass. And again, it's always important to remember that no matter what you're doing, you do response.end at the end, because if you don't, then the request will be left hanging for ages. And then in between, after this, you can just do any processing you want, but remember to do res.end. And the important thing to note is that all of the processing of the data and the response to the request should come in this request.end function because otherwise you might not have all the data yet. And one final note is if you're creating a production application, you might want to do request.onError too. And this one just deals with some sort of error that might occur during the request. And if there's an error, then this function will tell you about it, what it is, and then you can deal with it appropriately. In the next video, we'll see how to deal with post requests that come with XML data instead. So see you then. 
Welcome back. In this video, we'll learn about Ajax, what it is, what it's useful for, and then later on in the chapter, we'll learn how to use it with Node.js. Ajax stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. And traditionally, it is using JavaScript on the front end to send XML data to the server without requiring a page refresh. It's really useful for creating dynamic features that respond to the user in real time. And a prime example of this is the autocomplete feature of Google search, where as you type suggestions come up for searches, you might want to enter without needing a page refresh. A couple of other useful examples is Reddit's upvote feature where you can upvote posts or comments and Facebook's like feature where you can like posts on the fly without needing to refresh the page. Clearly it's a useful feature and as we'll see we'll undertake a mini project at the end of this chapter where we can update a document and have it auto save in the background by using Ajax. Before you can fully use Ajax with Node.js you must first understand the differences between HTTP request types which is what we'll cover in the next video. Welcome back. In this video we'll learn about HTTP request methods. So far in the course the only method we've dealt with is the get method which is used to retrieve a resource from a server. So we've always been responding to get requests, returning a resource, so for example, a HTML document to the client. However, there are many more, and one of the most useful ones other than get is post. And post is used when the client wants to change the internal state of a server. A really common example of a post request would be logging into a server, where you're starting a session with the server and therefore the internal state of the server is changing. So you use a post request. Another common type is a put request, which is used when you want to upload files or other big chunks of data to a server. And then finally, another common type is delete, which is when you want to delete some data from the server that you own. There's lots of other types as we can see in this list, and you can easily Google for a list of methods. But we won't see them very often, and mostly they are dealt with under the hood by Node.js itself. So get, post, put, and delete are the ones we'll be most concerned with. In the next video, we'll see our first example of a working Ajax request where we receive JSON, that's JavaScript object notation, from the client, and then we respond to it and send them a response, and that will be using a post request. And in the next video, we'll see how you can find out about the request method that's being used using request.method.